Joining us now on Can I Media is John Durbinger, and you were here talking about, like many of the other speakers here, safety. You're one of the keynote speakers. Um, tell us a little bit about your talk. Well, the uh, main thing I was here to talk about was sharing safety with another person. One of the challenges is that people over the years have told other people, watch out for each other or be, my brother, be your brother's keeper. Everybody thinks they know what that is, but nobody taught anybody what to do. And in reading some safety books years ago, about 23 years ago, I studied, and I found that studies have been done of how, if, I'm gonna, if you're doing something dangerous or you're near a hazard, everybody studied how to make you feel good after I talked to you. So when I come over and talk to you, you walk away going, okay, that wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. Nobody studied how to do it for the guy that's gonna share the safety with the other person. And it's, it's uncomfortable for people, so they don't. They avoid saying something because they feel uncomfortable, or a lot of times they think nothing's gonna happen. They see you near a hazard, but they've seen, they've seen other people do that. And I also have interviewed a lot of people where they go, yeah, you know, when Bob got hurt, they all of a sudden go, well, yeah, we've, we've seen Bob do that a thousand times, you know, or, and, and never thought anything bad would happen. Well, then when it does, they feel bad they didn't do anything. So Why do you think people don't point things out? Well, once again, because they don't think something's going to happen, mm -hmm. and primarily either because they don't think it's going to happen, or they don't know how to do it. The, it's, it's like anything else. You can have the motivation to do something. If you know the first step, most people get stuck and then don't move forward. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing, they see somebody and they go like, well, what should I, if you see a homeless person on the street, what's the best thing to do? And, and so a lot of people want to help. So they say, well, if I give them the money, is that good? Or is it actually making their life worse because they're going to drink some more or they're going to get drugs? And, and they really would like to help the person. They're not walking by going out oh, of heck with him. They're thinking like, well, what's the best thing? My son actually took a course um, with a church group he was with on what to do and stuff, and he'd shared some distinction with me uh, ab about some suggestions, what you can do that are, that's better. Well, it's the same thing in safety. You see somebody doing something that's safe, and you're like, well, I'd like to help, but I don't know what to do. Well, you said in your talk that right. ego is also an issue. Oh, you're sure. afraid that you might be bruising the person's ego that you're yep. talking to, yep. and that might prevent you from talking. Absolutely. That's a very good point. That, yeah, if you, you think, well, that's an experienced worker. They've been here a long time, which is part of why I teach. You walk over to somebody and say, hey, uh, would, you know, would you like to want me to watch out for your safety? Or for the experienced person, you could say, hey... Um, as you know, we need, you need a hard hat on when you're doing that. As you know, you really should have hearing protection. Just in the room where I just was in the breakout session, um, a glass got broken. It fell off the table, and I actually was the one that knocked it over. So I created the hazard, so they went and got somebody to clean it up. And after the session, we're talking. The gentleman from the conference center here was cleaning up. He had a plastic glove, you know, one of the little latex gloves or non-latex, whatever. He put that on. He's thinking he's being safe, right? Well, that's a great glove if you want to protect yourself from, you know, food and getting stuff dirty with us, or if you clean the restroom. It's not going to protect them from a shard of glass. So one of the guys there said, hey, um, would you like me to watch out for you? And the guy said, sure. And he said, that glove's great for food service stuff or for cleaning the restrooms, but it's not going to protect you from the glass. And the guy went and got some other gloves. And, and once again, though, you could look at that and say, well, he's got a glove on. The reality is he's actually in a more unsafe position because he thought he was protected by that glove. So he might act differently then. Exactly. He might start sweeping the glass up with his fingers thinking, hey, I'm protected. And then when one of those suckers goes right through it, boom. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, that, that's a challenge with any kind of personal protective equipment. Sometimes people go beyond what it can do for them. So When it comes to to talking to people because I'm listening to you say that and I'm mm -hmm. thinking back to when I was in the workforce and I'm thinking it's difficult to tell people or, or point things out to right. them and and that is where the ego comes in that could because I always believe that being straightforward and honest was the best way to be sure. when it comes to stuff now that I look back at my career I can acknowledge right. that perhaps that wasn't the best way oh, to of be course. yeah yeah, when people say, you hear people all the time saying, oh, I'm a straightforward and honest person. And it's usually people that every, irritate the snot out of everybody else. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. you, and you can see them on some of the, the reality TV shows and stuff, and somebody will make the excuse, well, that's just the way I am. You know, and they're the first one voted off the island. <laughs> Whatever, because nobody likes them. The reality is you, you don't tell the truth to people. My dad used to be, uh, work for an uh, aerospace industry for Hughes Aircraft uh, in Southern California. And when they do the security clearances with him, one of the things the FBI would ask him is, do you lie? And he says, of course I do. 
He said, I lie all the time. And I go, what? <laughs> and he says, you don't tell somebody they don't have an attractive child. I mean, you just don't do that, you know? <laughs> right. you know your wife says, How, do I look fat in this? Mm, you're yeah. not going to say anything. Yeah. So, I mean, there's times where you, you need to do something diplomatically or appropriate, and that, you know, this is a way of doing that, of saying to somebody, hey, as you know, there's a hazard there. And, and of course, in the presentation, I also pointed out how you respond is critical. A lot of corporations have me come and speak to their employees, and or, or they buy the book. We have organizations that are buying the book for their entire workforce, some of which I've gone to sp uh, had done a presentation for, some of which have just given it to all the employees. When, when somebody sees the hazard and you, just, you simply say to them, it's the response that makes a difference, and that's something you need to teach people also, is how you respond. You say, hey, thanks very much, I appreciate that. You teach the entire workforce in an organization, hey, whenever somebody points safety out to you, let them know you appreciate that they care about you. Mm -hmm. And that helps make that happen at a particular site. Um, you well, can because the key this, is right. they're not trying to, <coughs> to say anything bad to you. They're exactly. They are trying to help right. you. Yeah, somebody cared enough to say something. The guy in the room here, seeing the gentleman cleaning up the glass, doesn't want to see him get hurt. I mean, it's that simple. Um, and, and the guy responded, by the way, perfectly. I mean, if, if we could have had him on the stage, because the guy goes, he says, would you like me to watch out for you? And the guy says, yeah, that'd be great. And, and sure enough, and then, then he thanked him for pointing it out. And, and it was perfect. So um, it, it's just, it's one of those things, you make it comfortable for people, they'll be more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, your industry, there's ways you make people feel more comfortable when you're interviewing. Right. Now you've got me talking to you. Right. So I don't have a camera staring in my face. If you do that with some people in the interview, what are they going to do? Exactly. Right? Same thing. This is just a way of allowing people to feel more comfortable that, that fits in any kind of situation. So. so your main message here is to the people in the oil industry and how they can and bring safety into the workplace. Another message that you gave which really resonated with me was the marital relationship. Oh, so yeah, perhaps yeah. we can just end with, sure. with your story on that and, and how sure. you can make things a little bit smoother at home. Sure. Well, I, I, I mentioned that... Um, that I used to drive down the road, my wife would point out there were, there were taillights ahead, you know, the cars were stopping, and I'd go, yeah, I see that, leave me alone, you know, what do you think, I'm stupid, which I pointed out in the presentation is not the smartest thing, it's just another safety hazard there that you could get hurt, yeah. um, and it's not good for the relationship, so, and also realize it wasn't good from a safety standpoint. I got another set of eyes in the car, and traffic, I mean, people do screwy things on the road with texting and all the other things that are happening, and I don't care what the laws are, people are still doing it. Um, in fact, they've actually made it worse. Now people are, instead of texting with their hand up by the steering wheel, putting it down their lap. So, so if you're driving, look, see where the person behind you's eyes are. If they're down in their lap, they're not watching you. Mm -hmm. And so, so having her eyes out working out for me, wow, that's much better. So sure enough, you know, later on, I finally started saying to her, hey, thanks very much. And of course, my ego's involved. So I'd say, hey, thanks, I saw them. You know, and that, it, partially it's ego, but it's partially letting her know I'm paying attention, mm -hmm. that, I, that I am aware the other vehicles are stopping, but I said to her, hey, th keep telling me. You know, if you see something else, let me know. It doesn't hurt if both of us see it. Because mm -hmm. there'll be the time, and, and what, there was one time, and we were driving in Southern California, 65 miles down the freeway, and the car next to me is starting to swerve in the lane. I have no idea why, whether they were texting, doing something else. I'm now engaging them with other vehicles around me. She's looking forward and notices brake lights coming on. And because she said something, I was able to stop in time had she not, had she not been in the car with me, and I'd been focused on this other, you know, ineffective driver, which was a legitimate concern, I couldn't hit the brakes and stop because I'd have been dangerous to the people behind me. So I've got to deal with this person, but I'm not as attentive to the cars ahead. I'm glancing at them in and out while I'm watching the other guy. Her watching out, boom, protected both of us. Basically just comes down to being civil with each other and understanding that they're looking out after you. Yeah, that's a good portion. I mean, it really is. That's, that's a very good um, summary of that. It's, you know... That's all safety really is. Safety comes down to courtesy and caring about people. You, know, it, it, you do things that are courteous. You, you, you keep in mind it could impact somebody else. And uh, whether you see somebody by hazard, if you don't say something, it could impact them or their family. Likewise, if you don't do something safely, it can impact your family or other people. So, John, thank you very much for your Thank time. you, sir. Appreciate it. We've been chatting with John Durbinger here on Can I Media.